Hello, I'm Tim Hempton, candidate for State Senate. As many of you are aware, Senator James Timothy has stepped down. There will be a primary on Tuesday, September 19th. You may ask, why should I support this candidate? I am not a career politician. I'm a practicing periodontist, a dentist trained in a surgical specialty. I worked my way all through college and dental school, paying the tuition myself and through scholarship funding. Moving to Massachusetts 30 years ago, I took a teaching position at Harvard for three years. Presently, I have a specialty dental practice started 24 years ago. Opening from scratch, the practice was built on providing quality care for patients and making sure the people who work with me have a positive work environment. Running a small business was tough in the beginning, but perseverance and dedicated hard work resulted in a successful practice. While managing my practice, I also taught at Tufts Dental School, mentoring future clinicians. My background is not typical of most people who run for office. My experiences include actually taking care of patients, not just talking about health care, actually starting and running a small business, and hands-on involvement in education. As a taxpayer, it is concerning to see that some career Beacon Hill politicians don't have this real-life perspective, don't mind wasting our hard-earned tax dollars, and then asking for more. My voluntary government experiences include serving as a representative for town meeting in Walpole and on the Capital Budget Committee. It has been a very positive experience getting involved in my community's government. As an individual with private sector experience, I will work to reform the budget process. 40% of the budget is made up of mass health costs. This expense is not sustainable. The state auditor identified $9.7 million in waste and fraud in the mass health system in 2016 alone. As your next state senator, I will work tirelessly to see that your tax dollars are better managed. Regarding Chapter 70, funding for local education, this law has not been updated in 24 years, thus failing to keep pace with the realistic costs associated with funding for special education, along with other educational costs.